What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and this may be my biggest video I've ever done. I want to talk about 32 games that are releasing in 2022 that I'm excited about. I'm sure I'm missing one or two, but you know what? When you're at 32, you kind of just cap it at a certain point. So we're just going to go. There's no rhyme or reason to which ones I'm saying first. I kind of just wrote them down, and here we go. Pokemon Arceus is the first one I want to talk about. Obviously, the first big game, I would say, that releases in the, the new year in 2022, the end of January, and it looks awesome. I'm not a diehard Pokemon fan, but I am a fan in general. I've played many of the Pokemon games, and this one obviously being billed as a different kind of Pokemon game gets me excited. Will it be amazing? Will it be horrible? I'm not exactly sure, but it definitely looks interesting, and it definitely looks like something that I want to play. And again, being that first big standout game of the year definitely gives it something as well. Next game is Life is Strange Remastered. So we have Life is Strange Remastered. Technically, we have Before the Storm Remastered as well. This releases in early February, and this you could already technically have if you bought the Super Deluxe Ultimate whatever version of True Colors, which I actually did, and uh, you get it for free if you did that. If not, it's forty dollars. I can't wait. I mean, it doesn't. The thing that's interesting with this game is it doesn't look all that amazing. In fact, there were a lot of complaints the first time we saw the first trailer. I would say for remastered because it doesn't look like the greatest thing of all time. But I've always been such a big fan of the first Life is Strange game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. So any excuse I have to go back in and play it, especially with a new gloss, you know, kind of a new engine look to it. Uh, I'm always going to take that. Next up is Dying Light 2. Vi I mean, finally. F I, I, I could actually just leave it by saying that because we finally get a game that was supposed to come to us, I believe, what, in spring of 2019 was the first time uh, or was the first release area we were supposed to get this game. No, it, it's about time. Thank God. And it looks awesome. I mean, everything that we've seen of this game looks really, really cool. I'm really hopeful that this is a, you know, standout open world world game all the gameplay all the trailers that i've seen for it that they've shown looks very steady looks very it doesn't look like the greatest thing of all time but again this is another example of a game i just kind of want like just give it to me if it's amazing if it's a 10 out of 10 fine if it's not that's okay but let me just play it and i and i'm very happy that at least we're finally here Sifu is next, and my, oh my, am I pumped. Uh, you know, I love martial arts. I am a martial artist myself. I trained for a pretty long time, and I still do, in, I guess, in my own personal time. But Sifu is an amazing-looking game. I mean, that Jackie Chan kind of style martial art game where, you know, again, when you get defeated or when you lose or quote-unquote die, you age. I mean... This is one of those examples, like this past year we had Kana, Bridge of Spirits, of just that kind of independent game, smaller, small team, but big vision. And, you know, supported by Sony, funny enough, for both of those games, but a game that I really think is going to come out and just be something really special. You know what I mean? It's not this huge AAA game that costs you 70 bucks to play. It's not going to take you 500 hours to play it, but you're going to play it, and hopefully it's going to be something that you, you know, remember for a very, very long time. Horizon Forbidden West might as well do both of the Sony exclusives. There are more, but let's just do this one next. I mean, I cannot wait. Horizon, in terms of maybe even the PlayStation exclusives, that we know of. I mean, I love God of War and I love Ragnarok, but I maybe it's because we've seen so much of Horizon that it's just so much in my head, but I cannot wait to experience this game. Um, it, it, you know, I think for me, a really big part of this game is just kind of getting past the fact that you know, it's uh, it doesn't look like a completely new game. You know what I mean? Because it's definitely a part two to a part one kind of thing, which I think is fine. I think it's going to be bigger and better in every way than the first game. That's all I'm hoping for. I'm hoping it just kind of expands upon Aloy, expands upon the world and the characters and the gameplay, you know, fundamentals. That's all I want, and I think they're going to absolutely nail it. Elden Ring is next, and uh, this is a tough one because I'm not very good at all. In fact, I'm god-awful at pretty much every Soulsborne game that's ever come out, I guess, including Sekiro as well. Uh, now, I've played a bunch of them, but I'm just not ever, I've never gotten very far in any of them, and I'm not very good at any of them, but Elden Ring looks incredible. I wasn't able to play any of the, you know, closed testing, but I mean, I've seen videos on it. Looks great, looks a little bit different in terms of, like, the magic usage and stuff, and, uh, Hopefully, I always say it, and it never happens, but I'm always hopeful that this could be, you know, the first one that I play, and I really 
you know, getting grossed in. But even if I don't, you know, I respect these this game and the franchise and uh, from software, you know, I respect them for what they are. And I know that they serve, you know, quite a lot of people. Evil Dead the game is next, and I'm really excited for this one. Um, you know, you look at, like, Leatherface, obviously, now gets confirmed to have his own game. We obviously had, you know, Friday the 13th. We had Predator Hunting Grounds. Uh, you know, this game looks sweet. Uh, I, I'm not a big Evil Dead guy, but I like the potential, the very limited gameplay we've seen of this so so far looks very very promising it obviously got delayed but it got delayed to help the game out right to give it more features to give it more stuff so i'm hoping that this comes out and this is just uh really even if it wants to be in the same category as friday the 13th even though that was a troubled game that definitely has its weaknesses it made you know like a, a, a hit in pop culture on the internet youtube youtubers played that game a ton and that game blew up so even if evil dead is in the same category as that where it's got some big problems but it also is just kind of fun to play with people i'm fine with that i'm sold tiny tina's wonderland is another one this is you know if this was like a ranking video this would definitely be towards the bottom okay and it's not necessarily its own faults because there's a lot of really big games you know on this list but i'm excited i'm excited it looks different but it looks like borderlands it looks fun i like the enemy variety not too much to say about it because i'm also not i've played all of the borderlands games but i'm not like the biggest guy in it but it also just looks solid this looks like a fun game that you can play you know with other people again in the style of what we like and what's worked before but also trying to take it a little bit of a different direction and i i respect it for that stalker 2 a big xbox slash pc exclusive right i mean the game looks incredible and i do mean when i say looks i literally mean visuals um i'm not a big stalker one guy in fact i've never played it and i don't know almost anything about it so the only uh, my only introduction into stalker is stalker 2 but the game looks really good it does visually it looks impressive being on game pass can never hurt in terms of you know me playing it maybe it hurts at sales maybe it hurts it in other ways but for me playing the game you know it being on game pass is pretty much a guarantee especially for a big gigantic 180 gigabyte game that this beast is which is by the way kind of a negative uh you know it's gonna be guaranteed that i will at least give it a try forspoken another playstation one i'm very much into this game uh this game looks really really interesting this game looks fun this game's uh, the game looks a little bit different i don't have too much to say about it it's kind of a game that's going like under my radar while also constantly being in my head like i'm always thinking about it i'm always like aware that it's coming and i'm always impressed with what i see but i never really like stuck expectations to it like i'm expecting it to be a eight and a half or i'm expecting like this kind of story i've really left my expectations kind of wide open for it but also i'm very excited for it so it kind of puts it in a, a pretty unique space for me Starfield, kind of evening it out with another Microsoft one. I mean, what can you say about Starfield that hasn't already been said? Right now, it's a lot of promise. It's a lot of what it can be and a lot of what we've heard. Obviously, we, uh, we're we still before the era where we have to see the game. Or, and we, we haven't gotten to that point yet. So there's a lot to prove. Uh, there's a lot to prove for Bethesda as well, that they can nail it. And that's not a buggy disaster for the first month, which I have a feeling it may be in that realm. But, uh, you know, again, I'm hoping for a really good game that's all i want i just want a solid you know rpg experience uh, you know make it fall out make it elder scrolls make whatever you want in the sky in the, in the solar system do whatever and and hopefully it all comes together but again game pass game you know because bethesda is owned and uh, and that's you know enough for me a plague's tale requiem uh you know i just played the first one this past uh summer i believe it was on game pass and then it was also on playstation plus so if you had it for either of those consoles you should have been able to get this game for free and uh, i'm i'm glad i waited because you know i got it for free and uh, and i'm also kind of sad that i waited because the game is really really good that first plague's tale game is is incredible and so this one you know we don't know too much about it we haven't seen all that much on it but i'm pumped uh you know we have seen i think two different kind of snippets of a trailer for it and uh, and i'm impressed and I'm, I'm ready to go and uh, i'm just kind of patiently waiting we don't know when this is coming out just 2022 in general and hopefully you know we get a date pretty darn soon Another game we believe is coming out next year, but we don't have a specific date for, is Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. This was a game that when it was first shown 
I wasn't very high on it. I'm still not very high on it now. I guess the only reason it's on my list and the only reason it has a place in my head is because I do think, obviously, there's a lot of potential that can be done with the franchise. Um, I'm not even the biggest fan of Avatar the movie. I think it's good. I think it's pretty overrated in terms of how much money it made. But I, I do appreciate it, and I appreciate kind of the awe and wonder of that world. And I think it can be done relatively easily in a game, a AAA, like not a direct you know, movie tie-in thing. Is Ubisoft the best studio or publisher to be doing it? No, not necessarily. But for now, there's potential, and I'll just leave it there. Bayonetta 3, again, a game that has no date but is supposed to come out next year. Uh, not And not too much you can say about it. I mean, I love Bayonetta 1 and 2. Great, great games. 3, we finally saw the first look at 3, you know, a couple months ago, and it looks outstanding. I cannot wait for it, and that's kind of it. It's, it's a game, again, I think based fully on potential fully on how i guess how powerful that name is and the rest of it they just kind of have to give it to us the callisto protocol is next up remember this is from the makers of dead space so they they formed their own team and very much i believe the creator of dead space and this is a very dead spacey game without being you know titled dead space again very limited in terms of what we actually know about it but you know, you say it's probably going to be like Dead Space, going back to its roots, from the minds of it. I mean, these are pretty talented people. They also kind of have a lot to prove, right? Because now they're on their own, starting kind of anew. And so that's kind of, I mean, we don't really have anything on it. But again, the potential is all there. The Dark Pictures Anthology, The Devil in Me, is next up. Uh, House of Ashes was awesome. Uh, it was the best one by a mile of the three. Now we are on four. We're on the season one finale coming out. You would have to imagine probably next October, uh, somewhere in that range. Uh, and again, that's kind of it. I mean, we have the little teaser at the end of House of Ashes. But House of Ashes proved, in my opinion, that they're back. They're not as good as Until Dawn still. They've never been able, in my opinion, to replicate that. But they're definitely like higher tier than they were in the first two dark pictures and so right now it's just up and up for them another horror game the dead space remake um you know it sounds like this is going to be a very late next year game if it even comes out next year right maybe like a november december game so this may slip out of the year but you know from what we've seen the engine the improvements that can be made my dear god the biggest issue for me is just you know uh remakes are interesting because you have a chance especially for dead space right when they're adding kind of a bit more to the story and isaac talking and all that stuff you have the potential to do stuff that maybe is not going to sit well with people uh, and so you can go that way or you can nail it and i'm definitely hoping for that one uh, rather than the, the the first one so we'll just have to see again we'll have to see if this game even releases uh next year but i uh, if it does come out next year i think it could easily be one of the better games god of war ragnarok here we go i mean we're here we're at the end of the norse mythology and uh uh, maybe a little bit too soon. Uh, that's debatable, though, right? Not everybody <laughs> necessarily agrees with that. But the game looks incredible, what we've seen from that uh, the main trailer. Really, the only thing we have on God of War Ragnarok. Again, much like Horizon, definitely like a part two. You know, this is not a game where, you know, uh, 10 trillion things are going to be massively improved. You can tell everything has been, like, massively overhauled. No, it's a lot. It's very much a companion piece to the first game. And, and God of War, from what we've heard, definitely sounds like it was supposed to be that way, right? from one to two you can sit down and play both of them back to back in fact you may want to do that and I think a lot of people probably will do that so you know uh, there's not enough words in the universe to describe you know how excited I think a lot of people are including myself for Ragnarok um, we just have to kind of wait and see but this is easily going to be one of the biggest games of 2022 if it releases next year and another couple ones and these ones are big ones uh, for me and my community Gotham Knights and then Hogwarts Legacy I'll just kind of go both back to back Back. Gotham Knights, you know, obviously everybody's waiting for it. Uh, we've been waiting a very, very long time. 2022 seems to definitely be that year. I think you can say that a little bit more certainly with Gotham Knights than you could with Hogwarts because we don't, you know, Hogwarts may slip into 2023. We don't necessarily know that, but Gotham Knights looks great at times. It's got some weaknesses. It's got uh, you know, there's some things that can definitely go right, some things that can definitely go wrong, um, and obviously the DC crowd is very, you know, very much in it, uh, and, you know, I've covered Gotham Knights a ton on this channel, but it's definitely a game I'm looking forward to, my community is looking forward to, a lot of people. Same thing with Hogwarts, right? This game, you know, at this point, just please release in 2022. For the love of God, give us something, release next year, uh, and hopefully, hopefully you're good, because I swear to God, if you're not good, 
<laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be some issues. But no, I mean that trailer did everything it could have done. I know it's so old at this point, and it's so you know it's been talked about as much as we possibly can. Uh, but you know it does everything it needs to do. It gets people into it. Uh, us Harry Potter fans or us you know Wizarding World fans, we cannot wait for this game. I'm very very excited. Breath of the Wild 2. Technically, it's an untitled title, right? It doesn't have to necessarily be called that. But Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 2 supposed to come out also in 2022, although no specific date given. And that's okay. Uh, I think this game is going to make a big impact when it does come out. I mean, this is obviously specifically for Nintendo fans. You know, the first game did so many amazing things. Brought you know Zelda to a whole new group I would say did it a little bit differently and uh and is regarded as one of the better ones so uh, hopefully the second one can continue that trend and hopefully you know it releases next year which it seems like it's going to back to WB for Lego Star Wars uh, again hopefully this is the year although you could have said that for what three different years at this point 2020 2021 and now 2022 kind of sad and pathetic when you think about it like that but you know we'll let it go for now no the game looks awesome from everything we've seen we haven't really seen enough of it which is odd for a lego game also odd for a lego game that it's gone through the stuff that this game has gone through uh it just seems incredible how many delays and how much has probably gone wrong behind the scenes at this team considering it is just a lego game and i'm not saying that as some like down thing i mean i'm I, this is one of my most anticipated games i'm really really excited for this game i always have been and this is a day one buy for me it's just kind of getting sad waiting for it but hopefully you know like i said this is finally the year marvel's midnight suns is another one um this game i'm actually kind of into and i know not everybody is and that's completely okay right completely fine but this is a game that i think is going to be different but going to be fun you know not everybody's going to be into the xcom infused style and i know it's not like fully xcom but it's also not fully I don't know, whatever other thing you'd want to consider, right? It's kind of a mix, and, and I'm okay with that. I think it's going to be a game that serves a specific kind of person and not necessarily anybody else, and that's that's okay. I think that's going to be fine. It got delayed, so I believe it comes out late August now instead of March. Fine, more time to tinker away at it. That's all good. Multiverses, another WB. I, I didn't, again, I didn't write these in any order. I kind of just like scrolled and found all these games. But Multiverses, I'm pumped for. I really am. Um, I can't say specific things about it for certain reasons that I can't talk about in this video, but I'm really pumped for this game, and I really think it can be a good, different, serviceable fighting game. You know what I mean? Free to play, as long as the microtransactions aren't god-awful, as long as it's not like a pay-to-win kind of thing, which I don't think uh, so far so good, at least of what they've said out loud. And, you know, again, it's not trying to beat Smash Bros, and I'm not going to go into it thinking it's going to be the best fighting game out there, but, you know, if, if we can have Smash Bros, if we can have Nickelodeon All-Stars, if we can, for the love of God, bring back PlayStation All-Stars, Battle Royale, uh, you know, again in a second game or something, I mean, this game fits in, I would say, rather well with those. The Outlast Trials, another horror game. Uh, you know, we really don't know much about this, although we kind of do. I mean, they've they've said enough. They've showed uh, an okay amount, like in the trailer. Trailers, I believe there's two of them. Um, but we still haven't seen, like, a ton. We know it's supposed to come out next year, but it was also supposed to come out this year. I believe this was another game that was kind of quietly delayed. And I'm very excited. I mean, I love Outlast 1. I love Outlast 2. I fa in fact, I think I like Outlast 2 more than uh, the normal Outlast fan, but that's that's okay. Everybody's got their different opinions. But I think it can be really, really good, and I'm pretty excited for the multiplayer aspects of it, and I hope uh, I hope they nail it. I really do. Redfall is next. Again, if this was in a ranking, this would probably be kind of low, and no, I'm not an Xbox hater. It's just I don't know from what we've seen of like the early access stuff to this game if this is going to necessarily be the game for me. Uh, the trailer was kind of both. I mean, it was kind of good at times. It was kind of awful at other times, and that's okay. Again, this is a game for me, just like some of the other games that are earlier on on this list, that are built up by potential. You know, I think that there's a lot of room for a game like this to do really well, and then we'll just kind of have to see if they actually nail it. Somerville is next, another Xbox uh, exclusive, Xbox console exclusive, I believe, and uh, this game looks awesome. It really does. Now, what I will say, and a little bit of a more negative thing, the first time we saw it, I was blown away. I mean, this was one of those indie games, independent games that I would put on like 
my whiteboard, which I don't have. But if I did, I'd put it on there in terms of like this is these are the indie games that like I need to pay attention to. The second time we saw it at the Game Awards, it looked a little less original. It looked not as good. I mean, that's just the the honest way of me saying it. I didn't like it nearly as much. But it's still absolutely a game on my radar. It's still a game I would imagine I would play day one, especially if it's on Game Pass. And uh, you know, we'll have to see if it's if it just kind of impacts me more like the first time or more like the second time. Sonic Frontiers is next, a game that's supposed to come out next year. Obviously, we just saw a little bit of it at the Game Awards. Not much is known other than the kind of the open world feel of it. Um, Sonic needs to come back in a good way, in a big way. You know, we obviously have the movies nailing it, or the first movie at least nailing it, second movie hopefully the same, and uh, hopefully we can get a big, you know, triple A game that can also match it. Splatoon 3 is another one. Cannot wait. I love Splatoon 1 and 2 uh, for Nintendo just in general. So, you know, obviously Breath of the Wild is going to steal most of the stuff for Nintendo next year, but and maybe even Bayonetta 3, but Splatoon should definitely be looked at as well because the game looks incredible. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League, another WB game. Looks pretty good. Doesn't look like insanely amazing, but also is obviously going to be a game that I check out immediately. Obviously, again, in terms of what I cover on the channel, DC stuff being a big aspect of it. There's a lot of people very into this game. I'm excited. I really am. I'm excited for it. I want the story to be good. Uh, the gameplay definitely is a lot like Sunset Overdrive, which I think is fine. Uh, it doesn't maybe come across the greatest to me right now, but I'm sure, you know, hopefully it will when I play it. You know, it all just kind of works works for me but obviously if this was a ranking this would be much higher than uh, don't take it you know as being one of the last things as anything stray is second to last that's the cat game, <laughs> and, uh, and that's pretty much all I can really say about it, because it looks good, it looks very interesting, um, I'm not going to lie and say like it looks like the greatest thing of all time, but this is just one of those different kinds of games that, uh, you know, they could make a big impact, it could also just come out and, and, and be nothing, you know what I mean? And then finally, Two Point Campus, uh, which may surprise people, but I think Two Point Campus looks actually really cool, um, their last Two Point game was really awesome as well, I love the kind of Simsy management type games. These guys seem to do it better than than most other teams out there. So this is definitely a game that I, I'm really, really interested in. Now, uh, finally, the final thing to say, very long video, but this doesn't include things that kind of aren't confirmed. So like The Last of Us multiplayer may come out next year, but we don't know for sure. So it's not here. Uh, Bioshock may come out next year, but we don't know for sure. So there's definitely, you know, 32 games here. I left out a couple of them. Maybe there's like 35, 37. But then there's also games that are maybe rumored that we don't even know yet that could be here. So definitely a huge, huge year to look forward to in 2022. Let me know what are some games that you're looking forward to next year in the comments below. Make sure you're subscribed. Uh, you know, hopefully if you guys like the video, you leave it a like. Uh, I assume I worked hard on it and, and we'll go from there. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you all on the next video.